Major Brown says we ain't supposed to run horses except in an emergency. The hell with Major Brown. Of course, now, if I'd be a pretty young wife waiting for me at the end of a two-week patrol, I'd probably be wearing out a couple of horses myself. Parece que ha comido lengua, Tattinger. Talk quiet, Nightshine. I sent you a big bag of wind, Tattinger. Hell, everybody knows that. There's a machete put inside her. She can't survive. Thank <laughs> you. 
stupid for him. Take the post, Sergeant. Put the men at ease, sir? No. That's what a dead Apache looks like. He's wearing my wife's dress. I know how you feel, Caleb. The hell you do. You and your damned army. It's your damned army, too. Not anymore. Captain Caleb, I realize what you've been through, but I'll remind you that you're an officer in my command, and as such, I'll expect you to conduct yourself accordingly. supposed to be an escort at the mission. I can't keep patrols everywhere at the same time. You let my wife ride out alone. I had no reason to believe there were Apache in that area. How the hell would you know? You haven't had your ass be on that front gate in over a year. Oh, just a damn minute. I ought to kill you, Brown. That kind of talk can get you court-martialed, Caleb. They'll throw the book at you. You and that book got my wife butchered. And who put the bullet in her brain? I said, who put the bullet in her brain, Captain? They skinned her! <laughs> Caleb! Caleb!
it's cut. Welcome to Fort Bowie, General Miles. This is Captain Crawford, Her Majesty's Imperial Guard. He's a pain in the ass. And what the general means is I'm here studying cavalry tactics against the Indians. So far, he's learned mostly what not to do. Would you like to inspect the fort, General? Hell no. How do you get a drink around here? My officer, right this way. Lieutenant, some port. Yes, sir. Got any brandy? Yes, sir. I prefer brandy also, sir. You're heavily decorated, Captain. Well, most of these medals are for good behavior, and a few are for some very hard won victories over pretty ladies. Tell me, how would you compare your uh, North African campaigns with ours here in the West? Oh, well, uh, uh, there are similarities, I'm sure. But at least we can usually see our enemy. And here you are, thank you, here you are evidently rarely aware of a hostile until you're dead. That happens. Too damn often to suit me. Colonel Brown, there were 3,000 horse soldiers in the Southwest Command. How has a few hundred Apaches have been making fools of you for years? Perhaps the General's not aware that there are nearly half a million square miles of rock and desert out there. That's over 200 square miles for each man. I know about the geography. What I don't know is why we ain't winning this campaign. We're doing everything we can, sir. Not enough. According to recent patrols, we've patrols not Patrols only... my ass. The last 14 months, we've lost 84 men. Good men, sir. Not anymore, they're not. Just what do you suggest, General? You know this country, Colonel? Yes, sir. It's called La Espina del Diablo. Devil's backbone. Reports have it Mangus Durango is building a powerful Apache force down there. In that position, he can cross the border anywhere within a thousand miles, wipe out the whole Southwest. Not only whites, but all the Indians who might refuse to join him. No one can be certain just what he intends to do, sir. White men have taken everything he ever had, killed every member of his family. Figure it out for yourself, Colonel. You wouldn't be thinking of sending troops across the Mexican border. Wouldn't I? But that's absolutely contrary to regulations. Thousands of innocent people stand to be slaughtered unless we do something about it. Are you ordering me to cross the Rio, sir? Did that, there's a good chance they'd kick me out of the army, Colonel. A very good chance, sir. It'd be worth it if I thought to get the job done, but wouldn't. We'd cross the border in force. Ranga to Ranga, run us ragged. Be lucky if we caught up to his squaws and his dogs. Doesn't give us much choice, does it? We'll just have to wait until he attacks. You're mistaken, Colonel. Tell me about him. Captain Victor Caleb. Born 1841, Belgrade, Serbia. Immigrated to America, 1845. Came west with his mother and father, who later died of cholera. Served with the Union forces against the Confederacy. Decorated for gallantry at Shiloh and Vicksburg. He deserted the army two years ago. In a court-martial held in absentia, he was found guilty on seven charges, including the attempted murder of a superior officer. Attempted murder? He shot me, twice. Twice? In the leg and the shoulder. From what I hear about Caleb, if that's where he shot you, it's exactly where he meant to shoot you. He was convicted on the basis of his crime, sir, not his marksmanship. I also hear that he's done more damage to the Apaches by himself than the rest of the army put together. I assure you, whatever you heard is exaggerated. The army gave up looking for him long ago. I personally believe he's dead. Sir? Ferguson? Uh, begging the Colonel's pardon, sir, but there's talk that Captain Kale has been seen along the dry river. Rumors, Lieutenant. No one could survive two years alone out there. I'd give my right arm to talk to such a man. You might have to give more than that. He's a killer. I thought you said he was dead, Colonel. Lieutenant? Yes, sir. 
Form patrol. Find Caleb. Bring him in. Finding him is one thing, sir, but bringing him in might be another. Time to a mule. Drag him in if you have to. Yes, sir. alive, sir. He seemed to come straight out of the glare of the sun. We never knew what hit us. Did you say anything? Yes, sir. He said it was a lot easier to kill men than it was to capture them. Next time, they'll stop us the easy way. Well, <coughs> he can't intimidate the entire army. Done a pretty good job of it so far. It was as though he were everywhere and nowhere, all at once. He just managed to outsmart a handful of men. I'll take a patrol out and personally bring him in. I see no great advantage to losing you, Colonel. General, I assure you, I have no intention. Poor Caleb deserted. Did he have any friends, any close friends? Two of our scouts were probably closest to him. Tattinger and an Indian named Natchai. Would he uh, trust them? And he spent some time on Apache reservation with Natchai. He's known Tattinger for years. Bring them in. I'm going to try to make a deal with Caleb. What kind of a deal? One that might save the life of every white man and friend the Indian in the territory. That doesn't answer my question, General. You'll get your answer when I'm damn good and ready to give it to you, not before. Meanwhile, you'll do as I say. Whether I like it or not. Whether you like it or not. He sure ain't leaving no tracks. We will not see him until he wants us to. I got a sneaking suspicion that he ain't too far away. <laughs> Good to see you, Captain. You fixing to pull that trigger? Depends. I come up here to talk to you, not fight you. Talk. Oh, for Christ's sakes, Captain, you know damn good and well we wouldn't try to haul you in even if we could. You're looking good, Captain. I'm alive. Are you? You said you wanted to talk. There's a general named Miles took over the border command. He wants to see you. What about? Well, he didn't say. All he said was that you had his word that if you come into the post, why, well, you could leave whenever you was ready. How good's his word? As good as mine. Look, Captain, we ain't got all day. There's some Bronco Apaches not over a half a mile behind us. Five of them. Six. And they're closer than that. No guns. Ornery son of a bitch, ain't he? What do you call him? I don't. Does he bite? He even bites me. What about General Miles? Tell him to go to hell. Come on.
If I just moved a shade faster. You're getting old and slow. Well, as long as you're feeling so damn sorry for me, why don't you try to get me out of here and back to the Fort Doctor before that main war party shows up? I said I'm not going back. Oh, you just leave a poor old feeble man like me out here to die, huh? You're made out of leather and iron, you big bastard. Well, I'll have that put on my tombstone. I will take him back. What the hell are you mad at, huh? Well, he's mad because he's got a long ways to go all alone with a feeble old bastard on his hands and a, a war party on his ass. That's why he's mad. Let's go. What's that dog doing? Get away from there. Why, he was fixing to eat that Indian. One tried to eat him once. Captain, you're an uncivilized son of a bitch. Like I said, I'm alive. You're under arrest. I said you were... Put that gun away, Schmidt. But, sir, you he's... You me. Yes, sir. Get Tottinger inside. Give him a hand, Schmidt. Just for the record, it was General Miles' idea to bring you in, not mine. I brought Ted in just so he wouldn't die. Now I'm riding out. And I was right. I told Miles he couldn't expect any help from a deserter. Gonna shoot him again, Caleb? Go ahead. Don't let me stop you. Of course, if you do, I personally will tie the rope around your neck when they go to hang you. Now you can ride on out or come and have a drink with me. Well? Bad much to reach an understanding with him. Looks to be about half wolf. You aren't very talkative. As far as I know, this is the first time you've failed to disagree with a superior officer. Of course, you realize your uh, shooting Brown didn't do your service record any good. Caleb, I need a man like you. A man with enough hate in him to spend two years killing Apaches. One who doesn't care too much about living. What happened to your wife? How did she die? Wasn't she killed by a captain in the U.S. Cavalry? Do one of two things, Caleb. Pull that gun and shoot me, or talk to me about Mangus Durango and the Devil's Backbone. Talk. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Did Caleb stay or leave, sir? Stayed in the stable. 
He's not there. I just came from the stable. Oh? How's Captain, sir? I haven't looked in on him yet. He's fine. Where have you been, Captain? Checking the war party that followed us in. They're gone. My night patrol could have reported that. No. They couldn't. The entire patrol? All. Where are they? The desert, what's left of them. Lieutenant Ferguson, take a burial detail. No. No! Are they supposed to lie out there and rot? For now. I don't know what's going on, General, but I will not tolerate this treatment of men who died honorably. On a patrol that should never have been sent out. My God, if everybody around here fought Apaches the way you two fight each other, we wouldn't have all this trouble. As a commanding officer of this post, I demand... That's enough, Colonel! I don't expect you two to become friends. But I do expect you to get along together. That wasn't part of our deal, General. Don't you think it's about time I was told just what the hell this deal is, General? Yes, that's right. Step inside, gentlemen. Lieutenant, have the troops fall in. Captain Crawford, wait here. Yeah. Morning! When did you get started, Caleb? The sooner the better, sir. Started? This may come as something of a surprise to you, but Captain Caleb has been returned to duty. He's agreed to train a small group of men who can travel, strike, and fight like Apaches. Apaches? Well, in his opinion, they're ready. He's going to cross the Rio border, attempt to destroy Mangus Durango's war camp, the devil's backbone. That's suicide. I won't hear of it. Not only will you hear of it, you'll cooperate. The hell I will, sir. By writing a letter to the War Department saying that his shooting you just might have been an accident. With your help, I expect to get him a full military pardon. Not that he wants it, but I can't ask a man to lay his life on the line and then have him thrown into prison. I refuse. Refuse and I'll break you. I'll break you so damn hard you'll wish you'd never heard of this man's army. This is blackmail, General. If you think I'm going to stand by and let some deserter take command of That's my men... That's exactly what you're going to do, stand by. Captain Caleb will be in full command. But those men will be slaughtered. What the hell difference does it make? Durango jumps the border, we'll all be dead anyway. Let's go pick our volunteers. Shit, what? Sir, old friend accounted for. Sir, our president accounted for. Some of you men are going to be assigned to a special duty group. It'll be extremely difficult and dangerous. So dangerous, in fact, that I feel I cannot... Colonel, I'd sure hate to kick your ass in front of all these men. Captain Caleb will be in command. If and when you are selected, you will answer to Captain Caleb and Captain Caleb alone. Any questions? Do you wish to address the men, Captain? No. Still feel like arresting me, Sergeant? Nothing I'd like better, sir. Fall out and go over there with Nacha and the others. Yes, sir. We just volunteered. Chaplain. Captain? How is God this morning? God is in his heaven, and all is right with the world. Blown anyone up lately? The Lord has not willed it. He will, soon. You're one of the chosen few. Chaplain. Best dynamite man in the army.
There are two men I want to hunt here. Who are they? Corporal Jackson. He's in the guardhouse. Let him out. And Captain Scott. The surgeon. He's a volunteer. This is ridiculous. Sir, I must insist that I have some say in My just My men will be... need a doctor a hell of a lot more than you will around here. He's right. Shall I dismiss the men, sir? Double time them around the parade ground. Double time? Till I tell you to stop. Yes, sir. Sergeant? <laughs> Captain Russell Crawford of Her Majesty's Imperial Guard. I'm here studying military tactics, and I will consider it an honor, sir, to be part of your group. You look damn fancy. I am damn fancy, sir. I'm also intelligent, fearless, and a pain in the ass. Pet that dog. I'd be glad to shoot him, but I won't pet him, sir. You'll do. Thank you, sir. Shoot! Right! Hey! Forward! Turn! Double time! Hey! When can he get up? A couple of weeks. How about tomorrow? It's completely impossible. What time tomorrow? Sunrise. Oh, he's able to get up at that ungodly hour. This man will not move anywhere tomorrow. He'll be ready to move out at sunrise. So will you. General? You heard him. Colonel, two men have passed out on the parade ground. I think they should be dismissed. You'll dismiss them when I tell you to. Yes, sir. Ferguson, get Jackson out of the guardhouse. You trying to kill those men, Caleb? An Apache can run in the sun all day. Those are white men out there, not savages. The men that cross the Rio border with me will be. Carry on, Captain. Jackson. Caleb? Captain Caleb. Since when does a deserter have to be called by his rank? Then let's be informal, Jackson. Get your black ass over there with Natchai. Now. He's trouble. I need him. That's enough, Lieutenant. Drop! Hold! Order! Power! Left face! Happy soldier. Yes, sir, that I am. What about? May I speak freely, sir? You may. I'd love to bend that rifle over your head. Maybe the Irish aren't as tough as they used to be. We're as tough as ever, sir. We'll see. Be ready to move out at daybreak. 
Dismiss the men, Colonel. Is that all you're going to pick? For now. Why these men? Natchai and Tattinger are two of the best scouts who ever lived. Orozco is an expert with a knife. The chaplain is an authority on explosives. The Robertson boys cut their teeth on a Gatling gun. As for Crawford, the dog chose him. A tool? He's Irish. Damn it, man, Schmidt and Jackson. They get the chance, they'll try to kill you. Before I'm finished, they all will. Caleb, stay alive. I intend to. Captain Caleb, sir? I'd like to go along. Why? I just would, sir. Could you have stayed with those men out there? No, sir. That was only the beginning. Yes, sir, I know. And you still want to go? Yes, sir. Daybreak, Lieutenant. <laughs> Mount up. Follow me. Dismount. Take off your clothes. I want you to know how hot that sun up there can get. So that when you put those buckskins back on, you'll feel you're under a tent, protected from the heat enough to keep you breathing, at least. Do you mind if I move into the shade with your dog, sir? I don't want to hear the word sir again. That would make me the first target for the Apache. It sure looks like the Apaches could do us all a favor. Sir. just made your first mistake, Otur. Up your bloody bucket, sir.
Either of those blows could kill a man. It's one of the Apache ways of fighting. They call it Suchai. The ways they know to fight are all deadly. This rock is a deadly weapon. Sand is a deadly weapon. That sun is a deadly weapon. So are those horses deadly weapons if you use them right? Now let's get those clothes off and go to work. I want every man here to be able to cut an Apache in half. I'm surprised you didn't make a cleaner cut, Doctor. It's more resilient than a man. Next time it'll be a man. God uses a flaming sword, Chaplain. He also said, thou shalt not kill. Try remembering an eye for an eye. All right, all right, all right, all right. Get one again. Hey, damn it, Adam, what's the point of these silly little hatchets anyway, eh? Tomahawks. If a man comes at me with a tomahawk, I'll shoot him. After all, we do have civilized weapons for killing at our disposal, you know. What if you don't want to make noise? Then I'll use my butter knife, or whatever you call it. And if you haven't got your butter knife? Then I'll bite the bloody beggar to death. You want to try me? to finish this now, Jackson. No. Three things I want you to learn from what just happened. One how to handle the tomahawk. Two, never cry out when you are hurt. And three, never trust an enemy. There are two ways you can get into trouble. Throwing dynamite. One, hold it too long. Do throw it too soon. Any questions? Yeah, how the hell long are you gonna hold that damn thing? Here, Schmidt. You throw it. Ah, 
I might have known you wouldn't do that with a real... You still had 15 seconds, Schmidt. You threw it too soon. Let us try again. You try it. Trying to kill yourself? No. I think you'll take care of that for me. Try it again. Again. Yeah. By you, they were. I am not enemy. By you. I think it's uh, the worst food I've ever ate in Apache. It's good for what ails you, Smith. What ails me is what the hell I'm doing out here anyway. Coffee? You know, that's the first time I've ever lost. Looks like we still got us some nigger slaves. If I were you, Schmidt, I'd take that back. Who's gonna make me? I will. <laughs> How do you like that? An Indian standing up for a nigger. Now I've heard everything. Not quite. What's that supposed to If you don't close your mouth, I'll close it for you. You don't scare me, Caleb. Easy, Schmidt. Easy. Easy hell. Maybe the rest of you don't know why he got us out here, but I do. Getting even with the Apache is part of it. But you ask me, I say he's getting even with the Army, too. I say he's gonna see to it. Each one of us gets killed one way or another before this is over. He killed his wife, didn't he? my wife again. It'll be the last thing on God's earth you ever do.
Tool made two mistakes. He didn't test his And he hole. yelled when he was falling. An Apache wouldn't. Damn it, if a man is dying, he's a right to be a little disturbed about it. Not if he cares anything about the men he's with. Tool just died, and you stand there telling us he ought to kill Tool died because he made a mistake. More of you are going to make mistakes, and more of you are going to die. I just hope you have guts enough not to take the rest of us with you. I thought Apaches were supposed to be so damn quiet. They yell like that to scare you. Well, sure as hell did. Kill it. Get a stick of dynamite. What are you going to do? If you're as good a powder man as they say you are, I'm going to scare some talk out of this one. And if I'm not? I'm going to blow him to hell. This should burn long enough, if I said it right. And if you didn't? Then may God have mercy on your soul. Quanta cruz among us, Lafantera? Quanta cruz among us, Lafantera?
the Cruzamanga La Frontera. Mangus Durango's going to cross the border when the moon is full. Unloaded. Jackson, Chaplin, help him. What'll we do with the Apache? Turn him over to the officer of the guard. You're ready? Yes, sir. Hardly a military unit. They could take this fort. I'm afraid playing war is not quite the same as fighting one. We left dead men in the desert, Colonel. If that's playing, sir, I respectfully submit that you're a damn fool. Gentlemen, let's talk inside. That's right. Dattinger. Durango's going to jump the border when the moon is full. How do you know? The prisoner. A frontal attack on the devil's backbone would get us all killed. We'll attack them from behind. There's only one way into those mountains. There's a rock formation that projects out into a mesa. It's set out from the walls of the mountain about 50 feet. We'll climb it, build a bridge, and cross over. That's impossible. That's what the Apaches think. Your horses. They'll climb it, too. We'll be ready to move out by dark. I don't think you will. What does that mean? It means I've been in touch with Brigade. Tattinger. Well, are you coming? Or are you going to sit there and write another letter of protest to the War Department? You shot me, you son. You're lucky the one in the leg wasn't a little bit higher. Let's go to Mexico.
Jackson. Let's get the men up there and the horses. It ain't gonna be easy. Nobody said it was. That was a hell of a climb. You made it. He made it because I kept encouraging him. He was right above me, and if he had fallen, it would have been bloody inconvenient. Well, that was easy for you. Getting the horses and the equipment up here is going to be a little tricky. You said you could do it. I will. I never knew a mule could be so heavy. If we get him up here, he can do a lot of work for us. Hold it. Get out of sight.
How long will it take, Jackson? All night, maybe longer. Well, move. I will. Figure it'll hold? Let's find out. Mounted. Carry your bridge down, Jackson. Schmidt, you help him. That's our only way out. Our way out is through Mangus Arango.
Durango has two camps, one mile apart. First camp, 25 men. Main camp, 300, maybe more. We'll hit the small camp tonight. A main camp tomorrow night. Any questions? Only a mile between the two camps. What happens when Durango hears the gunfire? He won't. Did I? alive, and his sorrow for all things dead, he became born again. And when this happened, the eagle came magically to life and soared high within his heart. As long as men have love for all things living and sorrow for all things dead, then will warriors have two lives, but die only once. There's one still alive. Kill him. Look at him, Caleb. I said kill him. Now.
Match, I talk away.
kill you. General? No. I can't drink with you. You succeeded. I failed. I tried everything. Congress, the president. No use. Caleb, the charges against you still stand. I've been ordered to put you under arrest. If I fail to do so, I'll be relieved of my command. Makes you feel any better, I told him to go to hell. It's not I was getting out of this man's army anyway. No, sir. It's not. There you go again, Colonel. Always Captain telling... Victor Caleb died at the devil's backbone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, he did. It is true. As I shall so state in my official report to Brigade. That's referred to as a bloody heroic death he died. As I shall so include in my report to the Queen.